In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In today's Gospel lesson, Jesus told us the parable of the rich fool. The rich man in this case was a prosperous landowner. Jesus did not in any way suggest that he was in any way a dishonest person. He came by his wealth through honest effort and hard work. By the world's standards, he was successful. His crops were so huge, he had to expand. His one ambition in life was to be able to take life easy, to, as we heard earlier in this reading, eat, drink, and be merry. But Jesus' response was to call him a fool. And the man died before he could enjoy his wealth. Let us take a closer look at this parable. We read that the rich farmer thought to himself. Our individual private thoughts reveal to us our inner person. It shows who we really are. It is not what one says to his or her spouse or even their priest, but what one says to oneself that shows the real person. So what did this farmer say and think to himself? Surveying his bumper crops, he could have thought of the fertile land God had given him, of the rain and the sunshine. He could have thought of his good health and the many faithful workers who had helped cultivate the soil to produce such an abundant harvest. He could have thought of God and thanked him for giving him all these blessings. He could have said something like, Thank you, Lord. You have given me far more than I shall ever need for myself. To express how thankful I am, I am going to use part of this great harvest to feed the poor. Unfortunately, this is not what he said. As we listen in on the conversation with himself, we see that he is completely unaware of what he owes to God and his fellow man and woman. His only thought is of himself. How can he best hoard everything? What shall I do, he asked, for I have nowhere to store my crops. I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and all my goods. All he could think of was himself. By my count, he used the pronouns I, my, and mine no less than 12 times in his brief conversation with himself. The rich farmer continues his conversation. Soul, you have ample goods. His ample goods gave him a false sense of security. He did not need God. He did not need prayer. He did not need to give thanks, for he had so much else. He never thought anything bad would happen to him. He never even considered death. He exemplified what a rich man once said about his luxurious estate when he said this, these are the things that make it difficult to die. At the pinnacle of his success, God appears and calls him a fool. He had lived only for himself. 
He had forgotten his neighbor. He had forgotten God. He had forgotten his real purpose in life. In all his efforts to get rich, he became terribly poor spiritually. Consider what St. Paul wrote to his friend and brother Timothy. As for the rich in the world, charge them not to be haughty, not to set their hopes on uncertain riches, but on God who richly furnishes us with everything to enjoy. They are to do good to be rich in good deeds, liberal and generous, thus laying up for themselves a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of life, which is life indeed. The truth is, we owe everything we have to God. We can never pay for all the blessings God has given us. But we can share our blessings with others. In our great country, we celebrate Thanksgiving this coming Thursday. The first Thanksgiving began with pilgrims and Native Americans. After a difficult and harsh winter, during which half of them died, the pilgrims welcomed the opportunity of a new year to clear land, plant seed, and cultivate their crops. When fall arrived, they were blessed with a good harvest. The pilgrims did not become engrossed with the thought that they would be fine from that point on just because they had experienced a year with plentiful crops. They were not like the rich fool and hoarded their crops and were thinking only of themselves. Rather, they gratefully turned their hearts and minds to God. Together with the Native Americans whom they had invited to the celebration, they held the first feast of thanksgiving. We should all follow this practice. Give thanks to God on Thanksgiving Day. In fact, give thanks to God every day. Remember this. Everything we possess is from Him and belongs to Him. We are just here temporarily. Let us all, therefore, give our heartfelt thanks to our God each and every day of the year. Amen.